All right, it looks like TikTok and YouTube is actually working today. Let's get into it. Now, if, if this is right, if this is all true, what a mind-blowing idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that this is the reason why there's this bizarre shift between lower primates and us, right. which you don't see in any other animal. Right. There's nothing like it. No. Look, we have 46 chromosomes, right? Right. What happens is at 48. Exactly. Yeah. They discovered that chromosome number two was taken out. Art, they call it an artificial mutation. They, they mean geneticists, fused together and two telomere caps put on, one telomere cap on each side. Who in the world took chromosome number two out, fused it together and put telomere caps on it? And they say that it happened as an, an estimated 200,000 years ago, right at the time that the Sumerians have a say, they decided to make mankind to do the labor. There's no coincidence that the tablets are aligning with modern science. And this, this means that a couple things. The first thing, it means that we were genetically modified. The second thing that it means is the telomere caps limit our lifespan to about 120 years max, according to Harvard scientists. Now, in the Bible, what does it say? It says that my seed shall not abide in man forever. His years shall be 120. That was taken from the Sumerian tablets, even further back than that, thousands of years before the Bible was written, when, and when Yahweh, a.k.a. Enlil, shows back up, sees the human beings building a tower into the heavens, copying a tower that they themselves had built. It pissed them off. And he said, wherever their hearts decide to do, they shall, they shall achieve it. My seed shall not abide in man. His years will be 120. And then he did a genetic modification at that point, I believe, with the telomeres. And he spread mankind out around the planet, and he confused their languages. He, he had us speaking different languages, so we couldn't collaborate. Now we're in competition, no collaboration, divide and conquer. And this and is the Tower of Babel. That's it. That's it, man. So it was all done just to keep us from rising. Yes. We were advancing too fast, and he had to slow us down. If we shorten their lifespan, then they won't have enough time. By the time they realize who they are and what power they have, they'll be dead. Joe Rogan has had some pretty good guests on his show this year so far. Billy Carson was not quite as good as like Cat Williams or Terrence Howard. What he has to say is still extremely interesting. And I do have a few clips of this podcast saved for this episode. So we'll see a couple more in the upcoming clips. But to be completely honest, the little bit that I've heard from Billy Carson is almost exactly what he's always talking about. Nothing's really different. And we're not really learning anything different, which is still really cool. I enjoy this theory. These young boys found an abandoned home in the woods and decided to go and explore it. As they're recording, they're attempting to get into the home itself, but aren't able to do so. And maybe that's a good thing. They posted this video not realizing Something was watching them, and they caught it on camera. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. So we were walking in the woods, and we found this abandoned, like, place to put this baby doll. Wait, oh my god. I don't know what's in there. I hear something in there. That's just a stick. I swear I don't like this. I'm pretty certain that was just a ceiling fan. That was a bit of a letdown. Let me know if you've seen something that I might have missed, but I'm pretty certain what they were trying to say was possibly like a ghost or something watching them was just a ceiling fan. We have materials that we cannot replicate that appear to have been made somewhere else. And, and not just materials, but craft. And I, I've said it before, and I've got no problem saying it to you. Again, you can discard it as a belief, but it's an informed belief that we do have vehicles and we do have materials that, that we don't know who made them. We don't know where they were from. And importantly, they're intelligently controlled. Yeah, yeah. Th this is not a matter of belief uh, either. The, these objects or these craft that just completely outpace what we have and have been doing so ever since we've had flight. That's the thing. It's been around for a while. 
these are under intelligent control. Now, who is the intelligence behind this? Is it an artificial intelligence like you'd see in a drone? Well, even drones have operators. So there is some entity behind this, you know, an intelligent entity. Now, people like to throw out these terms. I have no idea where UFOs are from. I have no idea. But there is an intelligence, probably beings that are behind these machines. Someone made them. They've, they've got to be factories. I really love UFOs and I love UFO conspiracy theories and theories in general. I have a feeling that when we do see UFOs, UAPs or USOs, things like that, they're not necessarily outer space creatures or extraterrestrials. It's just ancient civilizations still roaming around the earth, still getting whatever they need done done and trying to keep from being in the public as much as possible. And I also kind of think that some of the UFOs that we see, or UAPs, are also military tech. I think that that's something that the military has control over. They probably have either ancient technology from these old civilizations, or they were given this technology by ancient civilizations so that we could have an upper hand and advance our knowledge on technology like that. And I've had a lot of people in the comments say, well, if it was military, that wouldn't explain why we have people depicting UFOs way back in the day when there was no technology, you know? And then that just continuously leads me to believe that there is an ancient civilization still living today on this earth and they just kind of keep to themselves and not deal with everyone else that's on the earth. They probably have whole civilizations either within the earth, in the waters, or even out in space. I like to believe that they use the dark side of the moon to keep everyone's eyes from being on them. They might have even built the moon for all I know. Let me know your theories on UFOs. Do you like UFO UAP topics? Let me know in the comments. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching. If you think you have what it takes to live on Mars, I have an opportunity for you. NASA put out an open call for their CHAPI mission to simulate a years-long stay on the surface of Mars. This will kick off in the spring of 2025. It is a four-person volunteer crew who will spend a year living inside Mars Dune Alpha, a 1,700 square foot 3D printed habitat in Houston to simulate living and working on the red planet. During the mission, the crew will conduct simulated spacewalks and provide data on a variety of factors, which may include physical and behavioral health and performance. So. How much are they getting paid? It's reported that NASA is paying the crew about $10 for every waking hour on the mission, amounting to about 16 hours per day every day for a full year. So roughly about $60,000. Do you think it's worth giving up your life for a year? That's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if that necessarily pays enough. I'm also really surprised that they're allowing just anyone to do this. I would think that it would just be practicing astronauts that they would allow to do this. I'll be curious to see what the outcome of it is and see what the studies show and see if people actually can handle it. Let me know what you guys think of this. I know a lot of people do not believe in Mars actually being a real place because a lot of people believe space is fake, but still the act of pretending to be on Mars and studying people to see how they can handle the situation is pretty neat. This guy watching videos about how trees give off free electricity, so he decides to try on his mango tree in front of his house. Y'all check this out. Look at this. Okay. So when I've had tests, right? This is a chargeable bulb. That's I'm trying to right? So it is true. Oh, true. It's the mango tree in the front of my house. Right. Yo, why did it look like the sun? Check this out. As soon as he put it in, why does it look like what the sun is looking like now, y'all? Look, with the laser beams coming out of it, right? It's looking like the Star Wars lightsaber, y'all. Like the double S lightsabers. Look at this. That's what the sun has been looking like. Y'all see what I'm saying? It looks just like the light bulb. So again, people are saying that, you know, they're speculating that this is like a, a simulated sun. You know what I'm saying? They're talking about how they're seeing these, uh, the diodes in the LED bulbs when they look up into the camera and they see the, um, what's it called? The lens flare, y'all. But it looks just like that. That's crazy, huh? So I think when that blackout happens, y'all, we might be able to get some free power from these trees. Okay. I mean, they have the whole neural network connected. Every tree is connected and they are providing electricity, obviously, through the planet. I've actually tested the theory to see if a light bulb would actually light up to a, a number of trees that I have on my property. 
and I've never had any luck. When I see videos like that, it just makes me wonder if there's some kind of trickery going on. Do they have like a small copper wire leading to the tree? that gives it some source of energy? Are they using a gag light bulb, one that lights up when you push down on it hard enough? Or maybe one that lights up when moisture is on it? Let me know what you guys think of this. Do you think that this is fake? Or am I just doing something wrong? Can you spot the man with the upside down face? I've talked about this guy before, but basically the man with an upside down face is sort of like a demon that is said to appear in photographs moments after tragedy has happened. During the scene of the tragedy, for example, the flood, if you're there, you will not see him, but if a photograph is taken and later developed, he will appear in the photo. This one is a little tricky, but there he is lurking in between the trees. Most commonly, he is found at scenes of car accidents. Here you can see him very, very clearly. He is said to always be smiling because he's happy that these accidents happen. He fuels himself off of these accidents. If you want to learn more about the man with the upside down face, check out my other videos on my page. I've been seeing a lot of these videos on TikTok about the man with the upside down face. They never really can get an up close shot of the man with the upside down face. Kind of like seeing the Grim Reaper, I guess. But for some reason on TikTok, these types of videos are just everywhere right now and some of them you can tell are really fake ai generated photos these ones i'm not so sure let me know if you've ever heard of the man with the upside down face or have you seen the man with the upside down face do you have photos of him let me know in the comments because there's a lot of people talking about this oh hi. wait a minute where is this mohan jandaro are there the photos that we can look at oh yeah look it up mohan jandaro in this valley dead body still laying in the street thousands of years later and Nobody just they just lay there. No they one's covered there. them up. Nobody's no one's covered them up. Yeah, when you right. put a Geiger counter over them, higher than background level radiation. Okay? Really? Yeah. And if but you, aren't stones higher than background level radiation? Some stones are. Some yeah. stones are, especially like diorite and uh, crystal granite. But these bodies, these are just bones. How come they're higher than background level, level I can't radiation? Can't wait to see this. Yeah. I, why haven't I ever heard of this? Mohen Jandaro. M O H E N. There you go. Whoa! Yeah, this is evidence of a nuclear war or nuclear. Go type back of to a the war. other intri the one that one there. That one's insane. Yeah, there's bodies that are sitting on the edge of steps next to their own buildings that they lived in. The building is turned to glass. That's three thousand plus degree temperature weapons fire. So there's a bunch of people that seem to die all at once, just mm -hmm. scattered around. Yeah. Now, what's the conventional explanation for how these people died? They have no idea. They have zero idea. The only thing that you that can... was just cu a couple, Jamie. Go to the other, just the Morhen Jandara mythical mass massacre. It's pretty interesting hearing about a place like that where there's still skeletal remains of people that went through some kind of occurrence. My biggest question, though, and maybe it's just because I just don't know science like that. But if there was a force hot enough to turn a house into glass at 3,000 plus degrees, then wouldn't the bones disintegrate? Should there not be any bones in the surrounding area if it was so hot to the point where it literally turned houses into glass? Unless these bones are just completely ash and if you touch them, they just completely poof into dust. I would have thought that the bones would have disintegrated at temperatures that high. Let me know what you guys think about this. Will we find microscopic life in heavy water? This sample looks like normal water. H2O, but this is D2O. The D stands for D's. Just kidding. It stands for deuterium. Let's take a closer look. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. It is twice the mass of hydrogen. Under the regular microscope, this sample looks pretty clean. So I'm going to swap over to a special bacteria lens. Hmm, okay. This is interesting. If you look carefully at these clips, you'll actually notice that there is moving bacteria in this sample. I even think I found a diatom, but there is definitely moving bacteria. But I'm not surprised. Bacteria can live in up to 98% heavy water. I was going to drink this water because heavy water is sweeter than regular water, but I've got a crazy experiment in mind. I think I'll save it. Just a real quick thing to add that I did not know. I did not know heavy water was sweeter than standard water. I wonder what makes it sweet. One of the most famous leading ladies of all time, Anne Hathaway, has lived before and she is the reincarnation of one of the most famous leading ladies of the past. There's a massive conspiracy theory that Anne Hathaway's husband, Adam, is the reincarnation of the most famous playwright of all time, William Shakespeare. Because look at how much they look alike. It's very suspicious. And if anyone had the Illuminati power to reincarnate themselves, it's the most famous man of his time. And guess what Shakespeare's wife was named? Anne Hathaway. And this is what she looked like look familiar to another Anne Hathaway we know. And here they are all together. 
the theory goes that they wanted to reincarnate so they can come back and the wife could be famous in this lifetime, maybe so she can act, because women weren't allowed to act in the 1500s. And Anne is very known for her poised, proper, almost old-fashioned way of talking and behaving that rubs some people the wrong way, but maybe it's because she's from a different time. Anne Hathaway was born on the exact day, to the date, of Shakespeare and Anne's 400th wedding anniversary. To the date! That's pretty crazy and a really huge coincidence. But I'm not gonna lie, her husband definitely looks like William Shakespeare. There's definitely a resemblance there. And it's crazy that William Shakespeare's wife's name was Anne Hathaway. I don't know if that's true or not. Please leave a comment down below letting me know because I've not done any research on this. But if that's the case, wow. This was a fun theory. Do I believe it? Not really. But it is really fun to think about. Let me know what you guys think. That is pretty creepy. I have a theory on the blind. I do not know how the chair is just magically being pulled out unless he's using a string. But as far as the blind goes, the curtain on the door, I feel like it was moving because the blind was sliding down. It was probably one of those twistables that twists the blind up. And as it was falling down, it was just untwisting it, making it flail all over the place. That's kind of my guess. But as far as the furniture and stuff moving, not a clue, unless he's using strings. Anybody else experience their flowers just wilting and die off with this with this new sun, y'all? I mean, look at this. Bro, I was just looking at my flowers last week. Bro, these are gardenias. You can't even tell what they are anymore. Bro, are you kidding me? This is insane. Last year... We didn't even have flowers, but this year we got flowers and this is what happens to them. The whole, even on our gate, we had these vines going all up in this gate. You can clearly see that, but they're not even here this year. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. You can't even tell what these flowers are anymore. They literally are cooked. They're literally cooked. Do y'all see this? Do you guys see this? And they barely get into that sun. They barely are in that sun. Wow, that is crazy. That's intense. I mean, to be honest, the tree itself looks fairly healthy that the, the flowers are on. It just looks like the flowers are kind of dry and dehydrated. It looks like they need some water to me. So depending on where this person's at, they probably just need rain and their flowers will come right back. Because like I said, the leaves on those bushes look pretty good and healthy. We're going to watch this in one second. Just hold on. But them saying that China landed on the other side of the moon and this is the best picture that we get. I want to show you something. This is their spacewalk allegedly in 1960. I want you to notice a few things. Look how fast the Earth seems to be rotating. And this is in real time, you guys. It's not like sped up or this why why is the whole Earth spinning? Yeah, they tell us the Earth spins, right? And to come on now. But in this new International Space Station footage, the Earth is not turning around and there's a freaking fly. How does a fly get into a vacuum?
Besides the fly, we'll act like we didn't see that. This earth is completely still, not moving at all. At least there's a camera moving at first. I cannot believe people fell for that. Notice how the rope, there's no gravity in that rope, but there's gravity in this dude looking all stiff. It's funny. I really hope that that first clip of the astronaut dangling his tether line in space was not considered to be a real video. I cannot believe that that was actually utilized as a video to show people in space. I just have a hard time believing that. That looked way too fake, way too obviously fake. Let me know in the comments, please. And also, that little fly that flew up towards the camera, that was definitely a fly. That was not trash. That was not some kind of lanyard just dangling around. That was definitely a fly flying around and even got close to the window. Five coffins draped in French flags mysteriously appeared by the Eiffel Tower over the weekend. And warning, because the reason why gets pretty eerie. In fact, this is just the latest symbol that has mysteriously appeared in France recently. In October, the Star of David began appearing, spray painted on people's houses, apparently to show where Jewish people lived. Blood red handprints appeared on the Holocaust Memorial in Paris. And now we have coffins, which had a message on the inside saying French soldiers in Ukraine. Ukraine. And here's the thing, while initially authorities thought these were probably hate crimes, after questioning the people they arrested related to these stunts, they realized that not only did these seem to not be hate crimes at all, but they were all connected. And their new leading theory is even more concerning. Now stay with me here, but if you've seen the movie Leave the World Behind, which, key point, Michelle and Barack Obama were executive producers for, there's a scene where all of these red pamphlets are being dropped from the sky and in Arabic writing it says death to America, leading the characters to believe that Iran was behind all of the crazy shit that was going on. But they later find out that in other areas similar pamphlets were dropped, but this time they had Korean writing. It then turns out that all of this was actually part of a military maneuver to topple a country's government from within. An enemy country sows just enough disinformation and false flag events to create confusion and fear. And without a clear enemy, the country's public starts to turn on each other. And if done successfully, the final stage of this military operation happens on its own. Civil war. Now, back to reality, what's interesting is that authorities now believe that all three of these recent stunts had links to Russian intelligence. In the Book of Enoch, if you want to know the angels that sinned that he's talking about, they somehow developed a lust for human beings. Where does that come from? Right. What angels that sinned? How do angels sin? These entire kind. But it's like little blips because it seemed as though when this angelic DNA and human DNA got together, it created these literal abominations, things that weren't supposed to be here, especially the Book of Watchers. And what, what it really is, is it's an expose. It's an expounding upon Genesis 6. It fills in the story because Genesis 6 is four verses, right? And so what, yeah. what does this mean? What happened? And this is what happened. It named names players, it names villains, it talks about the things yeah. that these eight fallen angels did and that taught humanity. But those concepts are only found like, you know, in the book of Enoch. And so you can just glaze over it and be like, oh, we're not going to, we're not going to talk about that in first Peter. We're not going to talk about what Jude said. I think it's easier to kind of just go to the, the main points that most churches like to talk about. So this is sent to me, no details or anything. This was in my message request. I've never seen this. Um, what is that? What are they holding? What are they? Who are they? Where are they? What beach is this? I don't know. I don't have any details. Are they mermaids? It almost looks like you're holding on to crocodiles or something. Are those reptilians and mermaids? I don't know if I can show too much of that video. They almost look like they might be naked women holding crocodiles or alligators or something. That's pretty crazy looking. I have a feeling it's not a real scene. It's probably something from either a movie, maybe some kind of art piece. But if anyone has any idea what that is, leave a comment down below. I'm sorry. They just found what? Uh, Area 51? So I'm sure you're all very, very aware of Area 51. It's one of the most guarded places on Earth, of course. Top secret. You can't go there. If you go anywhere near it, you're absolutely doomed. Although several people have captured pictures from above, some that are, you know, highly illegal to even see, but people have done it anyway. Nevertheless, everybody is still curious as what is actually going on inside this place. Is it just a government, you know, random army base? Or is there more to it? Is there tests going on? Is it some kind of crazy nuclear research base? Or aliens? That's the big one. 
what is actually going on in there. Now, apparently, in breaking news today, a man is convinced that he has found a real-life nuke town. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, mate, if you have found a real-life nuke town, then just turn it into an airsoft or paintball place and we can all go and just chill there. That'd be pretty calm. But does it look like this? Absolutely not. So this is the photo they found, a quarter-mile crater on Google Earth, just outside of Area 51, which is pretty damn big. But when zooming in, could see this, which looks like almost building remains, right? Now, we know about Doomtown back in the sort of 1950s, where they were testing nukes to kind of see how much it would impact people living nearby. So could this be something similar? Are they testing nukes again and we don't even realise? I doubt it, but, you know, what's going on here? There's a lot of theories coming up online, and of course, everybody is going back to the guy that said he found this, so... Guess we just gotta wait and see. Hit that follow button, I'll keep you updated. It would not surprise me at all if they were still testing nuclear bombs. And what if all this bad weather and everything is because they're testing out these nuclear bombs and it's causing all these major storms? All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here today. I'm really sorry there was no upload yesterday. TikTok was giving me a miserable time. It was every time I tried to watch a video, there would be a white screen with some audio. There would be no audio with no screen. It, it was rough. And on top of that, YouTube, for some reason, the whole website would not let me leave comments, would not let me like comments. I could barely watch videos on YouTube. It was just like a bad day for social platforms in general for me. But everything seems to be working now. I'm back on track. Everything seems smooth and operating well. So hopefully it'll all work out and I can get back on uploading these videos every day like I have been. So as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.